Carol, how can you sleep at a time like this? With your voice, it isn't easy. <laughs> Mother, I'm sure Walter is all right. How long has he been gone? Five and a half hours, Carol, since I left with the Bungays. Who are you calling? I'm going to call the police and report him missing. I'm using that special emergency number they tell you to use when you need help in a hurry. Busy. <laughs> <laughs> Who the hell could they be calling? <laughs> Uh, operator, would you get me the police, please? Oh, Carol, Walter's just got to be all right. Hello? Uh, yes, hello, officer. I'd like to report a missing person. My number? 555-9060. Uh, five, 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 oh, Walter Findlay. D, with a D, yeah. 50. 5'10 and a half. Dark brown eyes. And a small bald spot that's only noticeable from the top of the stairs. <laughs> No, this is not his boyfriend. This is his wife. <laughs> Carol, this is the first time that Walter has ever done anything like this. He could be lying somewhere in a gutter. Or worse. Mother, look, there must be some explanation. Now, didn't Walter say anything? That nothing, would you do nothing. He said nothing, Carol. Oh, he did say something. How did he put it? I don't know. Something about it's either my job or him. What? Mother, that's uh, an ultimatum. That's blackmail. Who cares about that? What difference does it make? The man is missing, Carol. Who cares what he said? Who cares where he's been? Oh, dear God, just bring him home. <laughs> where the hell have you been? Chris. <laughs> Carol, Chris is here. Everybody, everybody, everybody. What, what, what? I want you to meet Chris, my daughter's intended. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, that face, that baby face. I could just squish it to pieces. Oh, what Santa brought you? Hi, Chris. Hi. Listen, I really wanted to come wrapped as a gift, but the way your mother tweaks me, I was afraid she'd ruin the wrapping. <laughs> hey, Philip, you practice your Christmas carols? Yep. Hope the people give me lots of money. Philip, we don't sing Christmas carols to make money. Jesus taught us to sing out of love for the goodness and the kindness and the spirit of brotherhood in the hearts of our fellow human beings. And speaking of human beings, honey, don't go into any strange houses. And if they give you candy, don't eat it. You never know what they put in it. Mother, I don't think Jesus taught us that. Jesus was born in Bethlehem, not in New York. Chucky wasn't really very religious, but we'll still have a nice ceremony, won't we? Oh, yes, yes, of course, Mrs. Harmon. We are an equal opportunity cemetery. <laughs> we take all kinds. Dogs, cats, hamsters, snakes. <laughs> Why, just last week, we laid to rest a 34-foot python. A 34-foot? Where did you bury him? In the Holland Tunnel? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Chuck, I believe you said his name was? Charles. Charles Cavender Harmon, the third. <laughs> well, Charles will get the very best of everything. After all, he does deserve it. You know, I think the now deceased American poet Nick Kenny said it so beautifully, don't you? <laughs> Dog by Nick Kenny. When everything is said and done, I guess it isn't odd. For when you spell dog backwards, you will get the name of God. <laughs> That's so inspiring, isn't it, Maud? It's beautiful. Now that should be printed on every bottle of Pepto-Bismol in this country. <laughs> Poor little Chuck. I'll never, never forget him. His tail will always wag in my heart. <gasps> oh, oh, Mrs. Harmon. That is really just lovely. Oh. May I be so presumptuous as to suggest that that would make a beautiful epitaph on little Chuck's tombstone? Hmm. What tombstone? <laughs> may, I, may I be so presumptuous as to ask what all of this is going to cost? Oh, 
Will you be paying for the deceased? I feel that's the least I can do. She killed my dog. <laughs> Mrs. Carlson, Chuck was 77 years old, and he died of old age. I mean, you understand. Oh, of course. Of course, of course, Mrs. <laughs> Finley. The most important thing is that you're willing to pay for the burial costs of your victim. <laughs> Stop, Maud. I'm humbling myself. Florida, you did nothing wrong. All you did was admit a harmless little flirtation. Mrs. Finley, would you kindly butt out? Right on, Henry. <laughs> Incidentally, Henry, I want you to meet Mrs. Cavender. Oh, how do you do? Dr. Harmon. Nice day. And you know Carol, of course. What do you think this is, a party at the White House? <laughs> Now listen to me, Henry Evans. What happened with Florida is no different than what happened between me and John Kepley. Maud, if they want your advice, they'll what happened between you and John Kepley? <laughs> Look, Walter, we are talking about Florida. We are not talking about a silly little kiss in the kitchen at the Hendersons. Carol, you don't love him. Well, maybe I'll learn to love him. Uh -huh. Mother, look at my life. Don't you see? Love is a luxury I can't afford. Carol, look. If you were 65 years old, I still wouldn't agree with you. But honey, you're 27 years old. I beg of you, don't settle. Mother, I'm marrying a man I like very much and I respect even more. Now, I think we can make it on that. Oh, look at you. Before you met Walter, you were married three times. Yes, and each time it was for love. Even Barney? Especially Barney. I was so in love with that lame brain that it, it took me three years before I realized he had the intelligence of a radish. <laughs> Carol, I think your mother should not interfere and mind her own business. <laughs> Mrs. Naugatuck, God will get you for that. Instead of an housekeeper, you should have hired a parrot. <laughs> Believe me, even with a parrot, the house would have been cleaner. <laughs> well, a parrot would have done a better job talking to your daughter. Butt out, Naugatuck. Who are you to tell me to butt out? Your employer, that's who. Oh, no, you're not. Oh, yes, I am. Not anymore, you're not. I quit. <laughs> Here's my feather duster. I'm sure you know where you can put that. Devastated. You must be so depressed. I am woman, hear me roar. <laughs> Since you decided to run for the state senate and Walter walked out on you, you've been so upset. Carol, honey, it doesn't matter. It's over. When I walked into that apartment last night and found Walter in bed with... <sighs> Carol, Walter and I are finished. Over. Through. So I've decided to paint the entire house. <laughs> I've been guilty for years. <laughs> well, I should hope so. <laughs> Vivian, I don't know what got into me. I knew you had your heart set on going up to Dartmouth for the winter carnival, but when Jerry Masterson called to invite you, I lied. I, I said you were sick and you couldn't go. <laughs> I was selfish, Vivian. I wanted you to... I wanted you to stay on campus and help me study for our French exam. <laughs> Harry Masterson invited me to the Winter Carnival? <laughs> well, isn't that what you were referring to? The terrible thing that I did to you? No, I never knew he invited me. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> oh, 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 well then, I know what you're referring to. It has to do with that French exam that I just mentioned. 
Vivian, what could I do? When Miss Devereaux asked me why we both had exactly the same answers, I couldn't lie. I, I had to tell her that you let me copy from your paper. <laughs> so what if we both got Fs, Vivian? That was a long time ago. You mean I got an F on that French exam because you squealed on me? <laughs> <laughs> And you knew that. I never knew that at all. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, then I know what you mean. There was only one other terrible thing that I ever did, and Vivian, I am so sorry. I mean, I knew you were pinned to Jerry Masterson. I knew you were in love with him, and... <laughs> When he called and I told him that you were too sick to go to the Winter Carnival, well, I will never, ever understand why I accepted his invitation to go in your place. You went to the Winter Carnival with Jerry Masterson? <laughs> Come on, Viv, you knew all about that. No. Oh. Come on, Maud, Maud. now, Vivian. Maud, this is Mrs. Amici, the entertainer I told you about. Oh, yes, the one who does the imitation of Rich Little. No, uh, no, no. Mrs. Amici is 74 years old, and she does a specialty act. Oh, oh, very nice to meet you, no. Mrs. Amici. Now, you go right ahead, Mrs. Amici. Yes, you show me. Show me. Mrs. Finley, I just talked with Albany. Please, Colonel, if you have bad news for me, believe me, this is... All right, Mrs. Amici, I'm ready whenever you are, Tommy. Mrs. Finley, I don't believe you heard me. I said I just talked with Albany. Colonel, I don't understand. I am auditioning a show here. I'm sorry for the distraction, Mrs. Amici. Please begin. Mrs. Findlay, your show is out and the Takaho Cat Show is Now please, Colonel, I am auditioning a show here. Have a little compassion for the artist. Yeah. All right, whenever you're ready. Um, <laughs> Vivian, <clears throat> she's a sweet little old lady, but, I mean, what kind of an act is crawling on the floor? Chuck, by any chance, borrow money from you because she said we needed food? Starving was the way she put it. And she told me about Mr. Finley's business going bust. Walter, why didn't you come to me for help? <laughs> Arthur, there's nothing wrong with Walter's business. Mrs. Naugatuck just made that up to get money from Bert. That's right. She got $140 from me. Well, she got over 100 from me. I, I gave her 60 That's why Arthur was so upset. I'm sorry, Arthur. Well, I have to admit she got to me, too. She told me she needed donations for a new lobbying group. Senior Citizens Against Socialized Medicine. <laughs> How much did she clip you for? Four big ones. Four hundred dollars? Four dollars. <laughs> wow. Look who's here. Good evening, Dr. and Mrs. Harmon. Good evening, Mr. and Mrs. Finlay. Good evening, Bert. <laughs> Mrs. Naugatuck, Bert can hear perfectly well. Oh, oh, Bert, it's a miracle. <laughs> you just hold it right there. Perhaps you would like to clear things up. <laughs> what things, Mum? Why, you borrowed $60 from Mrs. Harmon, over 100 from me, and 140 from poor Bert. I know. I can't believe that I 
did such a dreadful thing. I, I'm no good, Mum. I'm just oh. no good. Hey! 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 You. If she loved me, she'd give me my $25,000. Not the $25,000 that your father sweated blood for. Oh, Carol, if I only had a daughter like you. If you had, you'd be hearing from my lawyer. Linda's right. Carol. She is 26 years old. Mother Jane has no right trying to control her life. And to think that I gave up martinis for six months so I could breastfeed you. <laughs> a man for five years, one day you wake up with a total stranger and dishes breaking all around you. What the hell is going on in there? And another thing, Vivian. Awesome! Would you believe it? Vivian is jealous of Agnes's funeral. Oh, I am not! Vivian, if you can't stand the heat, maybe Oh, you better... shut up! I can see the honeymoon is over. No, not quite, Marty. Tax wise. Oh, you <laughs> Listen, just because you had four honeymoons. Oh, just a minute. Vivian, don't you scream at me because that nitwit husband of you. Hold it! Pay no attention, Vivian. Just because Marty marries for quantity instead of quality. Hold it! <laughs> Wait a minute, don't tell me. You've come as the year of the Dempsey Tunney fight. Oh. <laughs> Estelle, why do you keep slapping me? Because I love to slap well, you. Well, you're gonna see oh, slapping Knock it off. <laughs> Who is this? Oh, that's Aunt Polly. I didn't have any place to leave her. I, she's 94 years old. 93. She lies about her age. <laughs> but she loves parties. So do I. Especially ones without him. Oh. All right, then you just stay here. I'm going to the Harrison's party. Not without me, yeah. you don't you? Oh, now, wait a minute. Party. Hey, guys, guys, you forgot Aunt Polly. Oh, the hell with them. <laughs> Well, uh, uh, may I take your coat, Aunt Polly? <laughs> Polly, want a cracker? <laughs> and now tell me, Aunt Polly, what would you like to do? Cut everybody out of my will. It's a lovely sentiment. <laughs> Aunt Polly, would you care for some champagne? <laughs> for one thing, Aunt Polly's a cheap drunk. Lord, <gasps> Maude, 17 years ago. Hey, Maude, look at me. Look at my face. Have I changed much? Yes, Vivian. <laughs> Since lunch. <laughs> Did anybody ever tell you you're a mean drunk? That's one of the things he loved about me. <laughs> oh, Vivian, I've been trying to prepare you. I've been trying to prepare you all afternoon for the fact that Peter is coming to see me, not you. Hey, wait a minute. Did you say, did you say he left you the night the Yankees lost the World Series? In that's, 1957. That is right. But that's the night Milwaukee won the World Series, and that's the night he came to me. That is a <laughs> lie. <laughs> the Yankees never played Milwaukee. Oh, who'd they play? The Republic of Panama. <laughs> How the hell do I know who they played? What am I, a football fan? <laughs> 
impossible that he went to you. And furthermore, I refuse to share my champagne with a neighborhood drunk. <laughs> I'm going to tell you something. I did not tell you before because I did not want to hurt you. Peter called me last night, Maud. Me, 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 me! Long distance, person to person, collect! <laughs> he said he would be checking into the Ramada Inn tonight and would call me as soon as he got there. Me, not you! I don't believe that. That is a vicious... Ridiculous lie! And I would laugh hysterically, hysterically! Except I can't get my cheeks to move. <laughs> oh, yes, well, now, let me tell you this, Mrs. Pinky. I am now going. I am going straight to the Ramada Inn, where Peter awaits me. <laughs> Mother, you do realize that Chris is staying so we can be together. Uh, of course I do, honey. I wouldn't have it any other way. Say, Carol, you sure got a nice room. Um, uh, Chris, uh, Carol, why don't the two of you just go and sit down and relax, and I'll go into the bedroom and check on dinner. I mean... We... <laughs> Carol, your mother isn't uptight about my staying here, is she? No, my mother's the most modern woman I know. <laughs> Uh, dinner will be ready in just a few minutes. Mother, you're not upset because Chris and I are staying here. I'm not? I mean, I'm not. <laughs> are you sure? I mean, I can sleep in the camper. Oh, please, Chris, don't be ridiculous. Look, Carol, you've known me for 27 years. You know that I am a completely emancipated mother. So welcome to my home, Chris. And the two of you are going to stay together upstairs for better or worse, and that's that. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'll go back into the bedroom and finish dinner. <laughs> Maud, may I speak to you? Well, of course, Vivian. Sit down, dear. I mean, may I speak frankly? Well, of course, Viv. Very frankly. Yes, Viv. Well, it's about the flying saucer you saw. What about it? May I speak frankly? Yes, Viv! <laughs> what is it? Well... Half the neighborhood thinks you're crazy. <coughs> Vivian, may I ask you a question? Of course. Do you think I'm crazy? May I speak frankly? <laughs> oh, honey, why didn't you tell me I have just the thing for you? That's what mommies are for. Here, sweetheart. Take a riddle in. It'll pick you up like that. Now then, I did you a favor, you do me a favor. Honey, I've got to have some marijuana. <laughs> now please, Carol, call one of your weird friends. Mother, I would love to help you, but at the moment, I don't know anyone who smokes grass. You raise a daughter and what happens? She turns out all right! Who can I turn to? Who? Morning, everybody. Florida. Mother, you're not gonna involve Florida. Oh, come on now. She is a member of the family, aren't you, Florida? So far, nobody ever noticed much of a family resemblance. <laughs> Listen, Florida, I have to confide in you. I need some marijuana. <laughs> I'm sorry, Ms. Finley. I hate to disappoint you, but on my salary, I'm a Dr. Pepper girl. <laughs> and after all I've done for that woman... Well, you heard her say she couldn't help you. Carol, please. Florida is black. Now, don't tell me she doesn't know any musicians. <laughs> I, me, I responded the same way the first time. Remember, Hordy? Huh? huh? Of course. It was three years ago, Easter Sunday. <laughs> oh, 
three years ago, we were just two couples dancing intimately. You were? Uh-huh. And then Horty sparked the idea first. She did. Oh. Oh, I tell you. You women. You women are light years ahead of us men. We are. When it comes to accepting new things. And then suddenly, Horty said the magic words. Let's change partners. And we did. Let's change partners. And we did. I want to tell you, Walter, it saved my marriage. Isn't it fascinating the variety of ways you can save a marriage? Okay, Maud. Want to save a marriage? It's whoopee time! Yay! I'm ready to flip a coin. Heads, you take the bedroom pants. We take the bed. Oh, just like us. Just like us, Horny. So you can't stand me. <laughs> 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 can't stand me. <laughs> I know. <laughs> well, if it'll make it any easier for you, yes, Mrs. Finley. Yes, yes. Let us merely say that I do not care for you. Oh, that's much better, isn't it, Maud? <laughs> <laughs> well, I... <clears throat> I see that you really dislike me, so... There's no need for me to stay, is there? I mean... Since you really don't like me, I might as well go. Viv, the crab meat was super. <laughs> Say la vie. Oh, Mrs. Harmon. Would you be so good as to pass the radishes? How the hell can you like radishes and not like me? A radish only repeats once. Oh, I'm sorry, Maud. We thought you'd gone. Well, how could I possibly leave when I just found out that I'm not wanted? It strikes me as the perfect time to leave. How could I possibly walk out without knowing why a man I respect, a man I almost revere, doesn't like me? Now tell me, Professor, what is it? What is it? Am I too tall, too short, too, too fat, too thin? Yes. I can change. <laughs> Carol, honey, I guarantee you that by the time you come back from your trip, this whole little problem with Philip will be entirely forgotten. Just a little love and understanding from the grandmother he adores. Well, you'll be surprised what a wonderful young man you have. Watch. Philip, sweetheart, I have a surprise for you. You know what we're going to do tomorrow? Your grandma is taking you to see the princess and the pea. Who the hell cares? <laughs> Philip, you come back here and apologize to your grandmother. What the hell does he learn language like that? <laughs> How the hell do I know? <laughs> well, he can't go around swearing at his grandmother. You want me to handle this, Carol? Well, maybe you should. It's obvious I can't. Hold it, King Kong! <laughs> you touch that child, and so help me, all your friends will be dressed in black and driving with their lights on. <laughs> I'm not going to let you go in there and apologize to him for what he said to you. Mother, the boy has to be punished. We can't let him go around swearing at people. All right, all right, all right. I'll do it Walter's way. Since you both insist on corporal punishment, I'll, I'll beat the child. I'll beat him till he's black and blue. <laughs> Philip, honey. Sweetheart, much as I hate to say this, because of your behavior, your grandmother's going to have to punish you. Okay. Let's get it over with. <laughs> Wait a minute, Philip, honey, can't we talk this out? Well, you go ahead and spank me so I can make my sandwich. <laughs> honey, you're really angry, aren't you? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Are you angry enough to scream? Yes. Yes? Would you like to scream and scream and scream? Oh, boy, would I? Okay. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> Go ahead, spank me some more, Grandma. <laughs> well, I beat the child. I hope you're satisfied. It's breaking my heart. <laughs> Maud. But, Uncle, you still 
haven't told me why you just dropped in out of the blue like this. Well, it's no coincidence, Maud. I have the happiest news in the world, and there's nobody I'd rather share it with than my favorite little niece, Ginger Snap. Maud, Walter, I'm getting married. <laughs> Oh, Uncle Henry. Congratulations! Oh, That's God. marvelous. <laughs> After all these years of being lonely. Oh, Walter, do you realize two new marriages in our lives in one day? Oh, but wait. The biggest coincidence is yet to come. I was on this singles cruise to Jamaica. And I... <laughs> We just hit it off on a singles cruise to Jamaica. Oh, come on, Maud, don't be silly. It just couldn't be. <laughs> you talk about coincidences, the but there's a thousand women on the boat. All right. Oh, wait, here's my surprise. surprise. Oh, I mean, this is... <laughs> Marta. Bingo. <laughs> here's my vanilla wafer. Walter, darling, still just as handsome as ever. Uh, uh, uh. Hi, Marta. <laughs> and don't tell me I know. This has to be my new niece. <laughs> <laughs> Kiss for your Auntie Marta. <laughs> Arthur, what kind of grass were you mowing? <laughs> Arthur, would you please tell me what's bothering you? All right. Marty, you'll have to leave the room. Arthur, when I have to leave the room, I will raise my hand. <laughs> Arthur, what's your problem? Well, it's, 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 what? I can't tell you. Of course you can. Arthur, you know you can tell us anything. All right. Now, promise you won't laugh. Arthur, you know we won't laugh. Of course not. It's John Wayne. <laughs> John Wayne? John Wayne. He's coming to my house this afternoon. <laughs> curiosity did to the cat. I know what it did to the one across the street. It got her 12 kittens. <laughs> you know, I, I just, I don't know why I put up with you. I really don't. You're not terribly efficient. You're not very fast. I mean, why do I put up with it? You're not black. <laughs> yes. Oh, Maud, what a nice gathering. Well, thank you, dear. You know, you do things so nicely. Thank really, you. I just don't know how you manage it. Well, what can I tell you, Mrs. Jenkins? Entertaining comes second nature to me. Arthur, I've got to have a tranquilizer. Give me the bag. <laughs> but, Marty, you had Milltown less than two hours ago. I know, and it calmed me down a lot. I am calm, am I not, Arthur? You're breaking my watch. <laughs> Uh, pardon me. Uh, could you tell me where the bathroom is? <laughs> Boy, certainly I live here. This is my home. Of course I can tell you where the bathroom is. Arthur the Valium. <laughs> Maybe I better give you five milligrams. What? Walter, what happened? Did the meatballs burn? The salad went limp? No. No, all the food went limp. No, really, Maud. I just wanted to tell you what a great party it is. Look, Walter, do me a favor. If you don't have anything bad to say, keep quiet. <laughs> I really don't think that I need this tranquilizer. Do you, Arthur? Mother. How do you think the party's going, Carol? Oh, it's a wonderful party. Everybody's having a ball. A lot you know. <laughs> What's in that pill you just took? Oh, Arthur just gave me a tranquilizer to 
calm me down. <laughs> As if I needed it. <laughs> Give me the drink. No, 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 you've had no time in Valium. You can't have a drink, no, too. Please. Did you hear a ding dong? <laughs> yes. Take my glass. You know who that is? No. It's the Fergusons. They're bringing the Kennys. They're the ones who gave $5,000 to talk to Julius LaRosa. <laughs> Well, Mr. and Mrs. Ferguson and you, dear people, must be the William Kennys. Uh, Walter! 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 Walter, you've met the Fergusons. These charming people, Walter, are the William Kennys. Loaded. All right, smart. Oh, of course, dear. In the upstairs bathroom below the sink, in the cabinet to the right side. <laughs> Isn't it always the way, though? <laughs> you wait and wait and wait, and then it happens right in the middle of a party. It's <laughs> You're the man who was looking for the bathroom. Yes, and I still haven't found so it. So nice seeing you again. <laughs> Holy, a gifted man. Vivian, you're in for a treat. <laughs> Marshall, what happened? I was roughed up by a street gang. Oh, no. Oh, oh no, no, sit here, sit down, sit down. Sit down. <laughs> I got off the bus and they roared up behind me. Oh, a motorcycle gang. Skateboards. <laughs> bunch of punks, bunch of young punks. You, you know, maybe we should call the police. A gang, you say? How many were there in the gang, Marshal? Two. <laughs> a couple of punks, thugs, rowdies. Oh, I do not know what is happening to the boys in this neighborhood. They were girls. <laughs> Hi, kids. Oh. Sorry, I see I came at a wrong moment. All right, Arthur, come in. You know, I'm really jealous. No, I really am. Look at Walter, the lucky duck. He comes home every night to a loving wife and a homemade meal. Look at me, the old bachelor. What do I come home to? A loving wife and a home-cooked meal. You're over here every night for dinner. <laughs> Have a carrot stick. Oh, thanks. Hey, who's this? What's up, Doc? <laughs> I'll do it again. What's up, Doc? <laughs> <laughs> That's my invitation to Bugs Bunny. Ah! Hilarious. I'm really surprised you haven't been invited to entertain at the White House. It's not very good, huh? I saw this English fellow, uh, Terry Thomas, do it on the Dean Martin show last night. He was absolutely hysterical. See, he has this slight overbite, and he's got this space between his teeth where he can put the character. The Dean Martin show last night, Arthur? Yeah, that's right. Last night. L I, I, Arthur, Arthur, I, I thought you said that you and Walter went bowling last night. Oh, 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 I think maybe it was two weeks ago on the Carol Burnett show. <laughs> or was it 1943 on the Fibra McGee and Molly show? <laughs> No, no, actually, it was the Julie Andrews show. See, she's English, so she always has English guests. I hate myself. You have to stand in line for that, Arthur. You know, there's an explanation for this whole thing. I know there is. I saw it on Love of Life. <laughs> I'm getting out. I'm great, great, go ahead. It's been great seeing you again, Maud. Put a couple of my copies in the mail, will you, please? I'm out of door stuck. Hey, wait a minute. That's not stuck. That's locked. Oh, Chester, use your head. The door isn't locked. Harry, would you please open the door from your side? It seems to be stuck here. Harry? <laughs> Harry! <laughs> Blow it out, your ditty bag. <laughs> Oh, my God, I bet Harry's gone home. Wait a minute. Here's... Don't panic. Here's a phone. Uh, oh, this is for incoming calls only. With you. I think this is just for incoming calls. <laughs> That's what it says, incoming calls. <laughs> oh. I mean, wait a minute. This means we could be stuck here for the weekend. 
Chester, this is serious. I know it is. With your mouth, we'll be out of oxygen in ten minutes. <laughs> Vivian, will you give me a break? You've been standing in front of the mirror for three hours. But do I really look good? You look marvelous. Very glamorous. Sexy. I mean, do you think Arthur will go absolutely berserk when he sees me again? <laughs> Maybe you'd better use the mirror. Well, I mean, I hope Arthur's at least a little hungry for me. Hungry? Well, I don't know about Arthur's appetites. But when Walter comes home from these fishing trips, he charges in like he's Yule Gibbons and I'm a bowl of grape nuts. <laughs> Am I crazy? Am I crazy, Walter? I mean, tell me if I'm crazy, because I have a pill for that. <laughs> no, you're not crazy, Maud. Just wrong. Have you got a pill for that? In other words, Walter, this is just a routine business procedure. That's right. Right. I mean, the fact that he is married, the fact that you are sending your own stepdaughter out to entertain him, it, it's, it's nothing but business. It doesn't mean a thing. Hmm? Right. Well, in that case, Walter, why don't you really treat the customer right? Give him something that is really important to you. See, that way he'll know for sure you're on his side. Give him what? Me. <laughs> You see my daughter hustle? Come on, fella, let's you and I go dancing. I'm gonna make one last request for your license. All right, all right, all right. My license is in my bag here. It'll take me a while to find it, so why don't you sit down and make yourself comfortable? On second thought, what the hell are you doing for me? Stand up and be uncomfortable. <laughs> and take off your hat. I prefer my hat when I'm on duty. Not in a home, young man. It is very, very bad manners in a home. Or don't they teach you that at the police station? Now, take off your hat. That's better. Well, you're... You're a baby. <laughs> Ma'am, I want that license. You're a pussycat! Stop that. I'm sorry, officer, but I, I cannot get over that baby pussycat face. Ma'am. Oh, you'll have to forgive me, officer. It's just that, you know, all my life, policemen have been older than me. And then suddenly, they were all younger than me. I mean, it's, you're not just young, you're a baby. I bet you couldn't even grow a mustache. I could, too. <laughs> Oh, Walter, 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 do you know what you are? I'm lost in a long, dark tunnel. Suddenly, I see a bright light at the end of that tunnel. You are that light, Walter, a light I rush toward. It gets closer and closer until there it is. It's a train coming at me. <laughs> All right, Lord, I'm sorry I invited the Harmons, but they're our best friends. What could I do? Well, if you had any decency, you would have said that we've had a sudden death in the family. <laughs> And then kill yourself. Oh, oh, Maud, this is just so sweet of you. Baby, let me give you a hand. Oh, thank you, Walter. Oh, I wonder if Arthur needs a hand with his luggage. This is his luggage. I'll shoot it up to the guest room. Look, Vivian, I'm going to level with you. There is no way that I can take a whole weekend of Arthur's narrow-minded conservative ravings. Maud, I'm just so sorry about last night, but try to understand. Now, Arthur's just been a little edgy lately, you know. There's a new administrator over at the hospital, and Arthur's being considered for head of surgery. Now, that is a great idea, because nobody needs head surgery more than Arthur. <laughs> Maud, I talked to Arthur, and I told him not to say anything controversial while we're here. Oh, come on, Viv. No, really, I did. I sat him down, and I said, Now, Arthur, under no circumstances do I want you even to hint at any subject that could possibly cause an argument between you and Maud. That's what I said to Arthur. I hope you're satisfied, Maud Finley. A bunch of homosexual pansies has just opened a gay bar in Tuckahoe. <laughs> <laughs> and what did Arthur say? Well, sweetheart, have you calmed down yet? I see. <laughs> Honey, look, Walter. Your old recording of the Andrews sisters doing Hold Tight. 
hold tight, hold tight, hold tight, hold tight, hold tight, hold tight. <laughs> We're having the most wonderful time. Why don't you grab something valuable and join us? <laughs> Walter. Walter. I'm racing with the moon. I've been looking on the moon. Enough, my warm Monroe. I love him. <laughs> Walter, will you listen to reason now? <laughs> well, there's no law against it. Mort. I've been thinking about the election, and you're right. I have to vote tomorrow. Because with all the problems of hunger and crime and racial strife... Walter, we have a problem in our home. How can you bother me with hunger and racial strife? <laughs> you are totally insensitive. Come on, Lee, let's go. No, stop them, Walter, please. They won't listen to me. Maybe they'll listen to you say something. Carol, Lee, listen to Maud. <laughs> Am I crazy? Am I the only one who thinks this is wrong? Surely your parents don't approve, Lee. They don't actually know about it. Aha! Uh -huh. I rest my case. That's a term I picked up from an elderly lawyer Carol used to date. <laughs> it's not what you think, Mrs. Finley. I've just been so busy with the campaign, I haven't had a chance to tell them about Carol. They wouldn't mind. Yeah. Well, I'd like to meet them and see for myself. You have met them. Leon and Ursula Harrison. You belong to the same club. Your parents are Leon and Ursula Harrison? The same. Well, 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 well. What, Carol, do you know what we have here? The littlest rebel. His parents are proper conservative people, so he dates older women. His parents are staunch Republicans, so he shows them by working for Jimmy Carter. Mother, I'm the one that's working for Carter. That's right. I'm working for Ford. <laughs> Well, anyway, the sooner Vivian finds a man, the better. You know, she's no spring chicken. Oh, she's your age, isn't she? Well, thank you, Carol. <laughs> I see you're still trying to get even with me for not buying you that pony. <laughs> for your information, my dear, Vivian is three weeks younger than I am. But the poor thing looks three years older. <laughs> oh, she is not aging well. Now her skin is beginning to look like one of those drip-dry seersuckers. Walter! Carol! Bye voyage, Mother! Oh, you won't believe this. Of all times for something like this to happen. What? I just broke out in a terrible rash. Oh! oh. oh, oh. Boy! You're kidding. Does this look like I'm kidding? Oh, it itches. Oh, oh. I wonder what it is. Well, from where I'm scratching, we can rule out mumps. <laughs> Maud, we're not going to have to cancel our trip, oh, are we? Honey, no, don't worry. We're going to be on that plane tonight. If I'm lucky, the person sitting behind me will have long legs and pointed shoes. <laughs> Hi, kids. I brought you something to read on the plane. It's a new book by Jackie Onassis. How to live in Rome on $10,000 a day. <laughs> Just a little humor. It's a travel book on Italy. Well, Walter, if you don't want to dance with her. <laughs> Better leave her alone. She's got a rash on her backside. Oh, oh that's better. Oh, in my parade of pleasure, scratching an itch runs a close second. <laughs> What's first? Later. <laughs> well, it's a good thing I'm here, Maud. Let's go upstairs. For what? I want to have a look at your rash. <laughs> I just bet you do. Maud, don't be foolish. Let Arthur examine you. He's a doctor. Oh, come on. Walter, I am not going to let my husband's best friend ogle my naked body. But he's a doctor, Maud. He ogles my naked body all the time, and it's no big deal. That's because your naked body is no big deal. 
The mine is different. You'd know that if you'd ever leave the lights on. <laughs> Mrs. Naugatuck, dear. I'm not casting my pearls before swine. <laughs> Mrs. Naugatuck, I assure you, Mr. Finley didn't mean to be rude. It's just that, well, this is such a shock to us that we find it difficult to believe. Oh, fickle, fickle, go jump on a pickle. <laughs> Virgil has written to me twice a week for the last two months. And if you don't believe me, I'll show you his last letter. Now. Oh, oh dear, it tickles. Oh, Virgil, stop, stop. There you are. It came only this morning. My dearest jelly bean. Walter, what are you doing there? I was going to watch Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. <laughs> Mr. Rogers? You mean that show on public TV with a man in a sweater who puts on his tennis shoes and sings, It's a Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood? Have you thought it as a children's show? I know. Oh, honey, I understand. Mr. Rogers is a very gentle, comforting person. He looks you straight in the eye and says, I like you just the way you are. And you need something like that right now. That's not why I want to watch it. He's got this young chick on his show, Lady Aberlin. Walter, it's indecent to watch Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood just to look at girls. Well, she happens to be a very fine actress. Oh, I'll bet she's not as good as Farrah Fawcett Majors. More. this is a kiddies program. They don't let her show as much... Uh... As much... As much what? Emotion! <laughs> or hair. This is the most humiliating experience of my life. <laughs> Mrs. Hathaway, stop writing! The minute those women get here, Walter will be cleared. You're just wasting your bick. <laughs> Walter. I don't see how they can bring these charges against you. Were you anywhere near Elm Street today? Of course, my store is on Elm Street. What are you getting at, Arthur? Oh, nothing. Uh, just wondering. You see that, Mort? You see what a charge like this can do? Even my best friend is beginning to have doubts. Oh, come on. Now, Walter Arthur isn't doubting you. Of course not, Walter. Uh, Walter, is it possible that... When you left the store, you forgot to zip up. I mean, sometimes you are forgotten. You do that too, Arthur. Vivian! Walter's the pervert here, not me. Arthur! Accused! 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 <laughs> pervert. <laughs> Nothing personal, Walter. I don't understand it. I mean, how could that marriage fall apart? It was made in heaven. Well, maybe it should have been made in Japan, like everything else. <laughs> Walter, please don't be funny when the whole world is crashing around our ears. Maud, it's not that I'm not sorry for Vivian Chuck, but, you know, what can anybody do about it? Look, Walter, our best friends tell us that after 21 years of marriage, they are getting a divorce. I mean, how can you not be shocked? Maud, I'm going to tell you something. You never know about marriage. Marriage is like a new pair of shoes. A new pair of shoes, Walter? On the outside, they may look beautiful, but only the one who wears them knows how much they hurt his feet. Wow. Boy, what insight. <laughs> no, I mean it. Don't be modest. How can you compare a broken marriage to a pair of tight hush puppies? <laughs> I don't care if he went out to get a snicker bar. <laughs> you tell him if he is not home in 10 minutes, we are finished, terminated, kaput, over and out. Oh, my, my, you, Maud, listen, you know, I just ran out of the house. Please, Vivian, and... I have my own problems. Yeah, but Maud, Maud, listen, Maud, Maud, Maud. All right, Maud. All right, all right, Vivian, Vivian, what are you trying to Maud, tell Maud, me? Maud, Maud, I just, I think, I think, I think, I think, I think, I think. Vivian, out with it. Maud, Maud, I think, I think, I think, I think. It's panic, Maud, isn't it? It's panic. The throat muscles are tightened up and you can't speak. This is terrible. He got fresh with you. He didn't get 
fresh with you. First word. <laughs> Valentine's Day? He forgot Valentine's Day? <laughs> sounds like, sounds like, sounds like. Uh, hangnail. <laughs> no, art, art, sounds like art, sounds like art. Uh, start. No, uh, 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 tart. Oh, that bum, he's out with a tart. <laughs> No, no. Heart, heart, heartburn, heartache, heart attack! Arthur had a heart attack. Oh, this is terrible. He didn't have a heart attack. It was somebody else. Thank heaven. Uh, uh, somebody with a runny nose. Uh, somebody with a mustache. Uh, a man with a mustache and a pointed head. A ball spot. Somebody with a ball spot and a mustache. Walter! Walter had a heart attack. Come on, come here just a minute. I've got to tell you something. Reverend McAllister. Here, pin this on your collar. Mom, would you stop campaigning long enough for me to tell you something? Ah! My toe! Oh, Judy, I'm sorry. How is that toe? You know, I haven't seen you since you accidentally shot yourself at the gun control center. Hi, Maud. Maud. Maud, now. Now. <laughs> Susan. Hi, Susan. <laughs> You know, Vivian, no. mm. Senator Bob has been mentioned as a possible dark horse candidate for the Democratic presidential nomination. Really? Right behind Kennedy and Jackson and Muskie and Harris and Lincoln. Oh, goodness. And Carter and Humphrey <laughs> and Benson and Wallace and McGovern. <laughs> Askew and Sanders. <laughs> And Brown and McCarthy and Assemblyman Julius Weinblatt of Duluth, Minnesota. But the smart money is split between Bob and Julius. Ma, that's not important. Listen, I, listen. Arthur invited Walter here tonight. Walter? Walter. Maud, your Walter. Well, I certainly didn't think you meant Mrs. Cronkite's Walter. What is the suspect's name? Oh, uh, Zorba Apodopoulos. Oh, oh he's Greek. Yes, and very, very hot-tempered. Oh, I know this sounds crazy. I mean, a man comes into my house to paint and, and is so overcome with emotion that, that he, he says, if he can't have me, nobody will. Now I, I sit here terrified. I, I feel like Helen Hayes in a movie of the week. <laughs> Make that Elizabeth Montgomery. <laughs> Mrs. Finn, but you know, sometimes these things get somewhat exaggerated. We, we found that women very often imagine that workmen in the house are making advances. I assure you, this was not my imagination. At first, I was willing to chalk it up to the fact that possibly he was high from the paint fumes. <laughs> or the wine. He brought wine to her? Oh, no, I gave it to him. <laughs> gave him wine. I mean, you can't serve a man feta cheese and Greek olives without red wine. Do you always do this for workmen in the house? Only painters. Because <laughs> you've got to keep painters happy. Especially if you change the color on the wall three times in one day. <laughs> I kept him happy, but I did not show him a good time. <laughs> Mrs. Findlay, are you certain that you didn't do anything to encourage him? Oh, absolutely not. If he mistook my kindness for willingness, it's only because he thinks he's totally irresistible. On the other hand, maybe I shouldn't have danced with him. <laughs> you danced with him. Oh, well, yes, I told you that I changed the color on the wall three times, so when he finally hit just the right shade of beige, well, we were both so overjoyed that we... Well, I thought it was completely innocent. But that's when he started making advances. Yes. Now, what happened? Well, I laughed. And he didn't like that. <laughs> All right, stop acting like a doctor and go get dressed for the party. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful, Walter. Those doctors will adore it. Party? We're not going to any party. What are you 
you talking about? Of course we're going to the party. What makes you think we're invited? Arthur never said anything about us coming. Oh, come on. Now, Walter, do you honestly think that Vivian, my oldest and dearest amigo in the whole world, would let me knock myself out saving her first big dinner party if I weren't invited? <laughs> Shows how little you know about the deep simpatico between two women who have known and loved each other for 35 years. Oh, Maud, I think everything's going to be fine now. Thank you so oh, much. Sweetheart, it was nothing. That's what friends are for. And you're the dearest. I'll tell you all about the party tomorrow morning. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Nogatuck. I would like a word with you. In a moment, madam. Just when I've set the chairs up. My husband can take care of that. Oh, you can't let a man do that, Mum. That's woman's work. <laughs> woman's work? <laughs> Mrs. Nogatuck, in this house, there is no such thing as woman's work or man's work. There is no discrimination between the sexes. That's what tonight's party is all about. Oh, blimey, another Vanessa Redgrave. <laughs> I prefer to think of myself as a tall Jane Fonda. <laughs> now, the time has come when we must stop thinking of ourselves as second-class citizens, Mrs. Nogard. Tuck. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> meant to be more than just maids, housewives, and sex kittens. Well, speak for yourself. I rather enjoy being a sex kitten. <laughs> you? I may be mature, but I'm not dead. <laughs> God had meant men and women to be the same. He'd have made them the same. Oh, come <laughs> off it. Nogatuck, that is old-fashioned attitude. Now, listen to me. If you want to stay in this house, you are going to have to change your thinking about the male and female roles. You know what's the matter with you, Mum? You don't like men. Oh, come on. You can't be serious. I adore men, and they adore me. But well, there's no one in the world who loves men more than I do. And if you need further proof, may I remind you that four of them selected me to marry. I know. There's one born every minute. <laughs> Nogatuck, I will not be insulted in my own home. And I will not be told how to handle men in anyone's home. A <laughs> woman's role is to serve the male. It is everyone's role to serve the best interest of others, regardless of sex. I'm afraid I cannot have this antiquated thinking in my house. Ooh, what are you trying to say? Are you giving me the sack? Well, I quit. Well, I wouldn't stay here another minute. Good. You'll get a week's pay for your trouble. I don't need your blooming charity, and I don't need you. Well, I certainly do not need you. Oh, yes, you do. Oh, no, I don't. I'm not going I to wouldn't get take me. you if you were sick. sick. And I wouldn't be here as a man. Mrs. Nogatuck, sick! I need. <laughs> I'm sorry I yelled at you. I apologize. That is not why I'm leaving. Of course that's it. Don't tell me what's it. I know what's it. What's it is, I'm leaving. Florida, why can, how can you do this to me? Why won't you accept my apology? If you just listen. Florida, don't you realize how close we've been? Would You've you been like me family. Say something, please? I mean, I don't even think of you as an employee Lord. or even a friend. Florida, don't you know what you are? You're my sister. Oh, brother. <laughs> It has to be something I've said or something I've done or you wouldn't be spouting this nonsense. It is not nonsense. Did it ever occur to you that I may be quitting because of me and not you? That I might have a family of my own, a house of my own, and a life of my own? I may belong to you from nine to five, but the rest of the time I belong to me. And from now on, me is going to be full time. I could raise my children and look after my husband. Oh, you really must hate me. <laughs> I hate you. Oh, pulling that soap opera stuff on me, playing on my sympathy. Really, Florida, I never thought you'd stoop this low. For the last time, it has nothing to do with you. You know, the trouble with you is, when your mouth is open, it closes your ears. <laughs> to get here to fix the battery. As soon as the weather clears. That could be next spring. That's soon enough for me. <laughs> Mother, did Florida tell you? Tell me what? 
Well, that Henry got a promotion and she's retiring. You mean... You mean you really are quitting? Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, didn't you think that you could come right out and tell me without giving me... <laughs> I mean, all this nonsense about change of life and everything? <laughs> then you really are quitting. Where are you going? Any place! Any place to get away from here! Good riddance! You belittle me, you laugh at me, you insult me! It's just impossible in this house for an artist! <laughs> All right, Walter. Go! Go! But remember, Walter, tonight, when you come crawling up those stairs to me, no amnesty! <laughs> Happy anniversary! Come on, what happened? Oh, your friend is the most selfish, stubborn, bullheaded, arrogant... Argumentative? Uh, argumentative. Pig-headed? Pig-headed. Chauvinistic? Exactly. Funny, I've always got along with him. <laughs> and you can have him. If I never see him again, it'll be too soon. Arthur! Oh, the water just hit a tree! Now, Ma, don't panic. Me I'll call panic. Them. And I'll see what. Uh, <laughs> Give the poor guy a couple of bucks. I cannot stand being pressured. Get lost. <laughs> Sorry, Arthur. I didn't realize it was you. Walter, I've got to talk to you. It's urgent. I've got a lot of things on my mind. Uh, Maud, could I have a few words with Walter? Of course. Be my guest. No, alone. I need to talk to Walter alone. Oh, come on, Arthur. Don't be silly. Maud and I share everything. If you have anything to say to me, you can say it in front of Maud. Anything. But, Walter, this is important. I'm sorry, Maud. This is important. <laughs> morning, he specifically said he wanted steak and kidney pie with mashed potatoes for dinner. And I say there will be no mashed potatoes. Mr. Findlay is turning into a walking fat farm. <laughs> he needs another potato like I need a silicone injection. He's gaining weight, isn't he? Gaining weight? If he knew how to fly, he could rent out his tushy as the Goodyear blimp. <laughs> I mean, I, I've never seen him this way. He only eats this way when he's depressed. Mrs. Naugatuck, come here. There will absolutely not be steak and kidney pie with mashed potatoes. We are having broiled trout and a salad with diet dressing. Is that clear? Yes, Monfura. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's really amusing. Remind me to give you a raise. Oh, thank you. <laughs> when does it start? When hell freezes over. <laughs> Got any idea what's bothering Walter? Oh, no, but I'm sure it has to do with money. I, 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 you know, he's, he's just, he's just not himself. I mean, I ask him what's wrong and he says nothing, Maud, except we have to cut down on expenses. Then he runs around the house, turning off the lights and stuffing his face. It's like being married to an owl with a tapeworm. <laughs> Water, darling. <laughs> Why are all the lights on? Because it's nighttime. <coughs> That's no excuse. <laughs> I'll help you off with this, Tuppy. <laughs> Nobody understands me. We gotta cut down on expenses. <laughs> Every time I go home, I just look like a Christmas tree. I just talk and talk and nobody listens. Walter, must you talk with your mouth full? And another thing, Mark, 
It's like a furnace in here. Can't we do something about the heat? It's costing me a fortune. <laughs> Mrs. Norgatuck, would you mind turning down the thermostat? Turn it down to 60. If you don't mind, sir, I'd uh, like to turn it down to 32. 32? That's right. Uh, I get a raise when this place freezes over. <laughs> Mr. Paganini, please play my rhapsody. And if you cannot play it, won't you sing it? Ha ha ha. And if you can't sing it, you'll simply have to. Scott da 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 do 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 What'd you think of my song? Fine, fine. How do you like my thermometer? Oh, fine, mode? fine, but honey, what'd you think of my song? Fine, fine, but take a look at my thermometer! <laughs> what did you think of my song? It's okay, Maud, but I thought that this telethon was supposed to be a tribute to the movies. Walter, for your information, this song is from Rhythm on the Range and was sung by Martha Ray. <laughs> Walter, you are so obvious. Why don't you just come out and say that, that you don't like my Scott da 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 wa da da Are you kidding? I married you for your Scott da 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 Oh, Mrs. Naugatuck, this looks wonderful. I, I really didn't expect you to prepare such a feast. Well, it's a special occasion. Mr. Finlay has been gone a whole week, and I want to show him how we've missed him. Besides, I don't expect they fed him too well at that loony bin. <laughs> Mrs. Nogatuck, the Jordan Mental Health Center is not a loony bin. And when Walter walks through that door, I do not want any references made to screwy or loony or crazy. Do you understand? Yes. And get those nuts off the table. <laughs> I'm sorry I snapped. Oh, it's just that I'm so nervous. I haven't seen Walter in a week. Well, didn't you go to visit him? No, Dr. Slager asked me not to. They discourage visitors. Oh, that's a good idea, poor Mr. Finley. He wouldn't like strangers staring at him just because his phone's off the hook. <laughs> Earth, that is exactly the kind of remark I do not want to hear. I don't want any talk like this in front of Walter. And get rid of the fruitcake, too. Yes. <laughs> Hi, Mother. Oh, Carol, you're home early from work. That's wonderful, dear. And I stopped by the drugstore and picked up the electric oh, razor you wanted for Walt. Thank you, darling. Thank you. Carol, are you sure this is safe? Of course it's safe. What can he do with an electric razor? Couldn't you get one with a shorter cord? <laughs> Mother, you're being silly. I can understand you hiding the knives and the pills, but this is going too far. Oh, you're probably right. It's just that I've never been through anything like this before. I, I don't know what I'm going to say to Walter. I mean, what if he's changed? It'll be all right, Mum. Of course it will. How much could he change in a week? And that's another thing. Why did they keep him a whole week? He was only supposed to be there for three days. Oh, Carol, I've just missed him. I've missed him so. Oh. Poor sweet Mr. Finlay. You never know how much you miss a man until he snaps his twig. <laughs> Mrs. Nogatuck, please, I do not want to hear remarks like that. How many times do I have to tell you? And do we really need those bananas? <laughs> I'll pass Chase Manhattan and declare bankruptcy. Oh, I wouldn't do that. Why don't you take over Lockheed and let the government bail you out? <laughs> Mrs. Nogatuck, don't you think the stuffed mushrooms are about ready? Oh, I think it's a bit early yet. But just to be on the safe side, why don't you go and give them a look? <laughs> well, if you put it that way... <laughs> Now, let's see what is left on the board. Uh, Mrs. Nogatuck, if I'm not mistaken, that's the telephone. You're not mistaken. That's what it is, all right. I would fire her in a minute if she weren't so gorgeous. <laughs> it's all true. I, I just panicked and tried to save my own neck. Let's face it, I'm a man with feet of clay. Nobody could run that fast with clay feet. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Finley, you know what I think? What? 
I think I'll go upstairs and play my radio real loud. <laughs> my own husband, my own husband did this to me. Oh, Maud, all right. So he wasn't very nice. Wasn't nice. Wasn't nice. Pearl Harbor wasn't nice. <laughs> Lizzie Borden wasn't nice. <laughs> You're not even giving Walter a chance to explain. That's right, Marty. You should at least listen to his side of it. You're right, I'm sorry. I want to be fair. Go ahead, Walter, explain. I promise I won't interrupt. Well, the Jack the Ripper wasn't nice! <laughs> John Dillinger wasn't nice! Now, you just calm oh. down. Oh. Now, you just got to stop calling Walter names. That's not doing any good, Mart. He already feels bad enough. You know, you're not helping. Oh, I know, I know you're right, Vivian. Just think how awful he must feel. How humiliated. Oh, look at, come here. Look at this poor man. Look at this. Look at that. Sitting there with his head in his hands. He just crushed. One more word and he'll just fall apart. Coward! <laughs> I want to get my trophy. We don't want to be late. They may run out of chicken a la king. Oh, I love that. <laughs> Honey, you and Sam have a wonderful night. See you later. Come on, Mom. I'm coming. Oh, now listen, Philip. I don't want you messing up the kitchen. And I want you to keep this door locked. Do not let in any strangers. Hi, and another thing. I'm Sam. Oh, come on in, Sam. <laughs> You'll be spending the night. I left a message with your friend. I'm coming, Walter. I'm Philip. I expect both of you in bed by 11.30. <laughs> Listen to me, miss, whatever your name is. Norma. Norma. <laughs> They're always Norma. That's why I've always hated the name Norma. Well, let me tell you something, toots. <laughs> There's something that I think you should know about me. I am not Joan Crawford, coming to plead with Sandra Dee to please leave Walter Pigeon alone. <laughs> I am not going to start gushing tears and saying, oh, you're so young and pretty and you can have any man you want, so please give me back my husband. That's not my style. <laughs> I'm an old hand at this marriage business. <laughs> so I'm going to give it to you straight. Oh, Norma, you're so young and pretty. Oh, you can have any man you want. Please give me back my husband. Do you know something? If you put this much emotion into your sex life, you wouldn't be losing your husband. I mean, I don't know why he... Time! <laughs> Mr. Clark, please. Sit down on the sofa. Now, Mrs. Phillips. Perhaps I can refresh your memory. Now, just sit down. <laughs> I'll be you, you be me. Okay? Now, as I recall, it all began. Your hands were on the steering wheel. You mumbled something about how nice the moon looked shining down on old Ironsides in the harbor. How nice the moon looks shining down on old Ironsides in the harbor. But what do you think you're doing? That's exactly what I said. <laughs> The next thing I knew, your other hand was here. Mrs. Finley. Please. That's exactly what I said. Mrs. Finley, this is very embarrassing. I'm humiliating and rotten. Lord, for heaven's sake! Walter, I'm busy. Get out of the car. until my foot goes through your windshield, smashing it to pieces. Ah. ah. Now I remember. Now you remember. You bet. <laughs> Mrs. Evans. <laughs> Mrs. Evans, have you ever met someone and instinctively liked that person at the very first time? No, never. <laughs> Oh. 
This is a big house you have here, Mrs. Finley. Oh, yes, but it cleans like a small one. <laughs> Oh, now, look, the thing that we have to get straight right off the bat is that in this household, we are all on a first-name basis. I mean, even my daughter calls me Maud. Now, what's your first name? Florida. Florida. Oh, you were named after the state. No, I was named after my aunt. Oh, and she was named after the state. No, she was named after her mother. Oh, her mother was, was named, named after an orange. <laughs> You see, they was picking them down there, and she went into labor right in the orange grove, had the baby ten minutes later. They was either going to call her Florida or sun kiss. <laughs> now you know the whole story. Fascinating. Fascinating. I mean, the things that come out of your culture are so, so rich, so juicy. Mm -hmm. I got one about an apple, I'll tell you something. About. I like you, Florida. You're funny. Thank you, honey. You know, Florida, you and I have a great deal in common. We do? When I was young, we were very, very, very poor. As a matter of fact, for the first seven years, I had to share a bedroom with two sisters. That many? And <laughs> Vivian, I'll think of whom I gave it to. Just give me a minute. Maud, if Arthur finds out I've lost that brooch, he'll never forgive me. Oh, all right, sweetheart. Oh. Walter, where have you been? We have to be down at the funeral home in 30 minutes to pay our respects to Hattie. Lord, I'm not going to the funeral. Walter, you don't mean that. No, Lord, I had a very hard day. A big party and Hattie's funeral would be too much entertainment for one night. <laughs> but is this a conspiracy against me? First Carol says she won't go, and then Mrs. Naugatuck, now you? Maud. I never had any use for Hattie when she was alive. If I went to her funeral, I'd be a hypocrite. What kind of a family is this? Am I the only hypocrite left? I'm not going. Walter! Hello, everybody. Hello. Look, Walter, you see, Arthur's all dressed. He's going. Actually, this is my grief suit. I only put it on when I'm going to a funeral. Hmm. You being a surgeon, I hope it came with two pair of pants. <laughs> <laughs> Arthur, you never cared for Hattie Flanagan, did you? No, I couldn't stand it. And yet you are going to her funeral. Oh, I wouldn't you? miss it for the world. <laughs> you see, Walter, Arthur has the proper attitude about these things. Forget it, Maud, I'm not going. Walter, if Hattie asks for me, you tell her I had to work late. Walter! She'll never believe that. <laughs> Maybe Walter's just nervous about going to see Hattie like I am. Oh, no, I don't think so. He was very brave and helpful to me when my poor wife Agnes died. God bless her. You know something? That's the last time I wore this suit. Vivian, did I ever tell you about Agnes' funeral? You showed me the slides. <laughs> well, I don't believe I ever showed them to you, Maud. I took them, Arthur. Now, Vivian. You look very attractive in that dress. What? This whole thing? Oh. <laughs> I feel that I should explain. This is, uh, in a way, a reunion. As you know, Chuck is Vivian's first husband. They met when I was married to Barney. And then they got married about the time that I married Chester. And then, of course, when I married Albert, well, the four of us used to go on vacations together, you know. And then Viv married Arthur shortly after I married Walter. <laughs> I know what you're thinking. Vivian has had a pretty mixed up life, hasn't she? Crazy. What? Well, for a second there, I felt like kissing you. Oh, it's crazy. Oh, no, 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 it's not. Don't... <laughs> I feel embarrassed, Walter, because just for a moment, I felt like kissing you. But Arthur's my best friend. And Maud's my best friend. And there's nothing between you and me, Vivian. No, nothing, absolutely nothing. 
Thank God we're adult and we don't have to make a mistake and complicate our lives. That's right. Thank God. your dog. How about a drink, Vivian? My marriage is going down the drain. Doesn't anybody care? Oh, honey, honey, now stop oh, worrying. Oh, don't honey, honey me. If it weren't for you, I wouldn't even be in this mess. I should have stayed the old Vivian. I should have stayed the old dutiful, submissive Vivian. Vivian, that is blasphemy. But that's easy for you to say. You're not married to Arthur. Vivian, anything's easy to say when you're not married to Arthur. <laughs> no, now come on, Viv, this is important. Your, your survival as a free-spirited human being is at stake. Don't you understand? My marriage is on the rocks. Don't you understand? Doesn't anyone understand? <laughs> Rest. <laughs> we'll try to keep it down. Sleep tight, Mrs. Nogata. Sleep tight? That's not a bad idea. <laughs> Mum, there's something I think you should know. Uh, Mum, you remember that uh, punch bowl you loaned the Harmons? Well, of course I do. Well, it got chipped at the party. Chipped? My priceless Waterford antique crystal punch bowl that's been in my family for generations, how chipped? Well, Mum. How chipped? Uh, well, how, Mom, chipped? <laughs> how chipped? Well, how Mom. chipped? How <laughs> chipped? Pretty chipped. <laughs> feel dreadful. Oh. oh, I'm all right now. You know, Mrs. Norgatuck, when I was a little girl, I broke my mama doll, which used to go, Mama, Mama. <laughs> One day I dropped it. The head broke into a million pieces. No more, Mama, Mama. <laughs> I cried for three days and three nights, and when I was all cried out, my mother, who was very wise, took me and put me on her knee, and she said, Maud, you know, a doll is only a possession, and possessions are meaningless. And you know something, my mother was wrong. <laughs> I'm sorry about the noise. Uh, I'm all thumbs tonight. <laughs> it's perfectly all right, uh, Ambrose. Actually, uh, Mr. Findlay has something he wants to talk to you. Lord! Well, certainly. Uh, Walter. Ambrose, you were in prison and everything, right? Yes. Well, I just wanted to say that... that that's mine. Sorry. <laughs> well... I think that you guys in prison did a really swell job on this year's license plate. <laughs> Walter! Ambrose, look, the truth is, we know all about what happened up in Syracuse. Now, quite frankly, we're frightened to death. Now, if you could just tell us... Well, Mrs. Finley, uh, uh, what is it you want to know? 
Well, I mean, if you could, you know, just reassure us. Oh, I get it. You, you want me to tell you if I was the one who really killed those people. Only if you're in the mood. <laughs> I hate it when people ask me that. <laughs> well, what the hell? Forget it. <laughs> You, you Finleys are just like everybody else. You don't care about Ambrose Riley the man. All you want to hear about is Ambrose Riley the ruthless murderer. So, you want to know if I'm a killer, huh? Well, I'm only... You don't know what it's like. <laughs> you don't know what I've been through. Hounded by the police. Spending time in prison. Trying to cook dinner with your cheap utensils. <laughs> you you, you want to know if I'm a killer, huh? Yeah, a killer. You want to know if I'm a killer. Well, nobody in this room is ever going to find out. <laughs> Not until you buy my book. Your book? Cook or Killer by Ambrose Riley. How about letting the skilled hands of a surgeon do the carving? Scalpel? Forceps? Here we go. Oh, too late. That bird is a dead duck. Hi, sir. Put it another way. That duck's goose is cooked. You can be so amusing. <laughs> Did you just make that up? No, not really. That's a routine I used to do for Agnes. Oh. Uh, little routine you used to do for Agnes. Cheerful, Vivian. Cheerful. <laughs> Remember, Walter, when I used to carve duck and I'd go quack, 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 and I just would laugh? Then when I carved turkey, I'd go gobble, 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 gobble. I just would laugh. I just would laugh, laugh. Agnes, Agnes, what? Agnes. She can't hear you, Vivian. I sit down. <laughs> with Agnes. Now what's wrong? Arthur, you are in love with a dead woman and I can't fight it anymore. Come on now, you're, you're getting absolutely hysterical over nothing. I am not getting hysterical. Now come on, let the man carve. Now what's this all about? I'll tell you what it's all about. It's all about Arthur and his precious Agnes. Agnes this, Agnes that. It's a wonder you didn't have her stuffed and mounted over your mantle. <laughs> Vivian, I'm shocked. That's against the law. <laughs> with you people. This party's gotten completely out of hand. I've spent saner evenings with Billy Carter. <laughs> Irene, Carol and Arthur and Vivian all have news that's gonna break Maud's heart. I got this marvelous job in Denver and I'm taking Philip with me. We're gonna live there. Arthur's moving his practice to Idaho and I'll, I'll never, I'll hardly ever see Maud again. I'm afraid this news will destroy Maud. Destroy Maud Findlay? Walter, I think you've been pulling your rickshaw too long. <laughs> You're afraid of how Maud will react to this news? Maud Findlay, don't you know your own wife? Maud Findlay is one of the bravest, strongest women I've ever had the good fortune to be acquainted with. She's a tiger, a giant. You think just because she hears that her daughter and her grandson are moving to Denver? <laughs> or that her best friend Vivian is going to Idaho to live? <laughs> She'll collapse? <laughs> Not that tiger, that steel. <laughs> She'll take it like the trooper she is. Don't you worry about Maud Finley. She's a rock of Gibraltar. Ma, <laughs> you don't look well. well. Of course I don't look well. I haven't been this upset in years. Well, why, what's the matter? It's Mrs. Naugatuck. Vivian, you cannot believe the thing she called me. Why? Why, 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 why? <laughs> To begin with, she called me nosy. She called you nosy? Oh my gosh, that's so thoughtless. That's like, like going up to a dwarf and saying, you're a dwarf. <laughs> <laughs> no, 
knows he's a dwarf. You don't have to tell him. <laughs> He's a nosy dwarf. You'd certainly never tell him that. I mean, you might tell him he's nosy. Or you might tell him he's a dwarf, but you would never, never tell him he's a nosy dwarf. <laughs> so count your blessings, Maud. You're nosy, but you're not a dwarf. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Viv. I lost my head. Oh, it's just that it's been such a trying day. And it's all because of that damn party. What party? Come on now, Vivian. I know that Mrs. Naugatuck and Bert are having a party and you and Arthur are invited. I don't know what you're talking about. Have it your own uh, No, I swear. I don't know anything about any party. Well, anyway, if it hadn't been for the party, I, I wouldn't have broken the urn. And then I had words with Mrs. Naugatuck and I fired her. You fired Mrs. Nogata? I never want to see her again. Oh, I hope that doesn't mean she's going to call off the party. I'm bringing a potato salad. <laughs> what party? Lord. Oh, Mort, we've got problems. I've been going over the money, checkbook. Honey, this is no time to think of money. Tonight is a night of love and romance. Oh, good. Then why don't you run down to the bank and kiss the teller? We're overdrawn. <laughs> Please, tonight Bert is proposing to Mrs. Naugatuck. Oh, that's right. How do I look? Oh, you look wonderful. But I forget about the hat. <laughs> He's right. He is not right. Hello, everybody. Hi, guys. Oh, hi, Ben. Mrs. Naugatuck, oh, we just came over to wish you luck tonight. Oh, thank you, Mrs. Norman. Thank you. You're not going to wear that hat, are you? <laughs> That's an old lady's hat. <laughs> Arthur, that happens to be my hat. Oh. Oh. Well, uh, maybe, maybe you got it on backwards. <laughs> Much better. It takes 20 years off you. Something happened last night. What did he do to you? Carol, I'll kill him. Oh, I'll mother, kill him. All right. You went to his place last night. You watched the Carson show, A right? A little. He didn't get on until quarter to one. Yeah, and don't tell me that you watched Virginia Graham and those two midgets from Austria for an hour and 15 minutes. Uh, Look, he brought out champagne, didn't he? Yes. Yeah. Piper Heidsick, 1961. Yes, I think so. Yeah, and then he did 10 minutes wrestling the cork between his knees. Oh, mother. Okay. Yeah, the lights were dim, Carol, and it was very romantic. No, it was not romantic. He called me Maud. <laughs> <laughs> he called her mom. Mort, are you all right? Oh, Walter, Carol and Russell are not seeing each other anymore. He called her Maud. Is that why you seem so pleased? He called her Maud? Oh, Walter, I'm pleased that she's not seeing him anymore. It has nothing to do with that. It doesn't, huh? This guy goofs in an intimate moment and calls her Maud. Now, I didn't say it was an intimate moment, Walter. Okay. They were plucking chickens at three in the morning. <laughs> Walter, you are jealous. Don't be silly. You are jealous. I've had it up to here with Russell Asher. The poor soul. He doesn't realize that he's only hungering for my daughter because of his latent feelings for me. <laughs> oh. I have had it with you. I have really had it oh, with you. Oh, yeah, sure. Now it's all my fault. Never again in this lifetime will I go last minute Christmas shopping with you. Well, you okay. took the last box of Christmas cards in the whole store. Now here it is, Christmas Eve, and today I got cards from seven people I never dreamed I'd hear from, and thanks to you, I don't have anything to send them. In other words, you need seven Christmas cards. Well, actually, I could do with four. Three of the people I heard from I can't stand. <laughs> Vivian, because it is my very favorite night in the year, 
And because you and Arthur are going to be sharing a joyful, peaceful Christmas Eve with us, I'll give you four of my cards. Oh, thank you, Maud. Maud. What are you doing, Viv? Uh, do you have a stamp? I've got to get this one off right away. Oh, thanks. There we go. Whew. Here. <laughs> one of the cards I got today was from you. <laughs> Mother, is that you? Hello, Mother. Really? You didn't have to slam the door in my face. Hello? Isn't it bad enough that I have a broken foot? Hi, Mother. You know, the way I feel about you, Vivian, I ought to give you a swift kick in the cast. <laughs> and wasn't my day bad enough without subjecting me to that interminable session with that irresponsible quack? Bonjour, Mother. He is not a quack. Where is this, Vivian? Mr. Norcross happens to be an accredited psychic. He's been used by the federal government. Vivian, we have all been used by the federal government. <laughs> all right, then. If he's such a quack, how about last week when he predicted I'd have my accident? Hi, Mother. Vivian, this is the third time this year that you have tried directing Arthur to a parking spot, and three times he's run over your instep. <laughs> Are you home already? <laughs> Mother, why are you so upset? I'm not upset. I'm just terribly annoyed because I wasted an entire afternoon. Carol, I'll tell you why she's so upset. She's upset because of the four things that psychic predicted are going to happen to her. <laughs> First, she's going to get a phone call from a mysterious stranger. Oh, come on. Now, Vivian, that one's right out of the beginner's gypsy handbook. <laughs> Uh, second, someone very close to her is going to suffer a severe emotional trauma. Vivian, everybody close to me suffers severe. <laughs> Third, she's going to receive some good news. And fourth, Carol, I want you to hear this. Imagine telling me, who has been married four times, that I'm going to be married a fifth time. <laughs> Can you imagine a thing like that happening to me? Yes. <laughs> Did you think I got you your first training bra? Hello, everybody. Boy, what a rotten day. Arthur, would you please tell Maud what kind of health I'm in? Sure, old buddy. Come by my office tomorrow. I'll give you a complete physical. You gave me a complete physical last week. I did? Do you remember what I said was wrong with you? <laughs> you said there wasn't anything wrong. Really? There must be. You look awful. <laughs> you see, Arthur, he is working himself to death. He's not even taking the time to eat. I have begged him to slow down. And he has a terrible time getting to sleep. He does? Yes, he's very restless. Restless, is he? Yes, just tossing and turning and thrashing around. All night? All night! Just as well. Vivian. What? <laughs> May I ask you a question? Sure, what? How long have you been sleeping with Walter? <laughs> Francie is entitled to this one chance at happiness. And I am going to make sure that she never has to meet that drunken monster father of hers again. I'm Francie's father. <laughs> and you heard what I said. Oh, no. You called my father. You called her father? Listen, I'll wait in the kitchen till cooler heads prevail, okay? <laughs> it's a pleasure to meet you, Mr. Potter. Francie, you're coming home with me right now. Don't you dare lay a hand on her helpless head, you drunken sot. <laughs> What'd you say? How dare you inflict your mindless cruelties on this innocent child? Woman, what are you talking about? You cowards are all the same. Always picking on the defenseless. Well, go ahead and hit me. <laughs> I dare you to hit me with my husband standing right there. <laughs> Thank you.
Maud. Please. But well, why doesn't he pick on someone his own size? There isn't anyone his size. Now look here, Mrs. Findlay. Don't you, Mrs. Findlay, me, you big barge. Your drunken child-beating days are over. Norman, will you shut up? <laughs> Did you hear what this monster actually said to me? Yes, he said, woman, will you shut up? A very common expression frequently heard in our bedroom. I don't know where you got the idea that I drink. I've got an ulcer. Have you ever heard of anybody getting drunk on Maalox? And what's this about me bidding up on my girl? Francie, I never hit you. Well... Only because you was afraid you'd kill me. Nancy, you lied to me. I had to. The truth wouldn't have been worth $300. Well, it here. Wait a minute. Me first. What exactly did you hope to accomplish by coming here? I don't want Carol leaving home. Not out of anger. You mentioned her father. That was your first husband. No, that was my second. Oh, I see. <laughs> right now, you're married to your third. No, Walter's my fourth. <laughs> you know, life is trial and error, darling. Well, they've gone. They've left us. That this is going to be the most rotten weekend we've ever had. Our husbands desert us. Everything on television is a rerun. It's going to be a complete disaster. <laughs> oh, let's face it, Viv. There's only one thing that two lonely, desperate women like ourselves can do in a situation like this. What? Go off our diets. <laughs> mm. Oh, boy. Oh, oh. Mm -hmm. oh, oh. oh is there some like that? This is almost better than sex. <laughs> almost? Uh-huh. Why did it taste this? Huh? Yeah? I see what you mean. Mm. Oh, no. Oh, what? Oh. Mm. Now, the thing that drives me crazy, Viv, is that oh. while we're cooped up in this house with... Where's the drawn butter? Huh? Vivian, there's no more drawn butter! No more drawn butter! Easy, easy, easy! easy. <laughs> While we're sitting here cooped up with nothing to do... Uh -huh. Boy, that really gave me a start. <laughs> Those two clowns are out on that lake having the time of their lives, laughing... Scoopo. Mort. Oh, water. Well, on life's highway, there are many strange twists. We are mere mortals. We don't have any control over what the fates decree. What I'm trying to say, Mort, is... Tinky is not with me. I know. But thank you for trying to break it to me so gently. Break what to you? That Tinky is dead. You knew? Viv told me. I wanted to tell her! I'm sorry! Big mouth! I heard it first! She's my wife, I should have told well, her! she's my best friend, and I have some rights too, you know. Boy, you spoiled everything, Vivian. Ooh, will you two stop it? A woman is dead, how can you stand there and bicker over who's gonna tell mother? You're right, Carol, I'm sorry. I guess I could tell Aunt Rhonda up in Boston. I want to tell Aunt Rhonda. But at least I can tell Arthur. I already told him. There's nobody left for me to 
town! <laughs> 22 years, Vivian. We've been, we've been everything to each other. I mean, there wasn't a confidence that we couldn't share. We've, we've been like sisters, Vivian. Like, like sisters, Maud. <laughs> and can I trust you to keep a secret? <laughs> what is it? Don't look at me, Viv. <laughs> Vivian. I'm pregnant. <laughs> You're kidding. Aren't you? You're pulling my leg, Maud. Maud? Maud, please pull my leg. Vivian, at age 62, I'll be the mother of an Eagle Scout. I don't believe it. No, they made a mistake. Laboratories make mistakes. There's no mistake, Vivian. The rabbit died. <laughs> Laughing, no doubt. Maud, you're a grandmother. With an eight-year-old grandson. Vivian, do you know what that means? Do you know what that means? That means that I live in a house where an uncle is about to inherit his nephew's potty seat. <laughs> oh, Vivian, Vivian. I was just coming into the prime of my life. I mean, Carol is bound to get married again. I was even thinking about having the, the sofa recovered and getting new carpeting. I was even toying with the idea of having my eyes done. <laughs> I was back to Dr. Spock and spit up and... <laughs> Poor Philip, he's throwing up again. I might as well go up and practice with him. What? Vivian, you tell him. Oh, no, not me. Carol, here I find you a beautiful two-story house with two fireplaces, and you're acting like it was an outhouse in Siberia. Mother, I love that house. You want to give us a wedding present? How much would it cost to move that house to another state? <laughs> Honey, I know what you're feeling, but don't you think you're being a little rough on your mother? That's easy for you to say. You haven't lived with her for 28 years. <laughs> what the hell is that supposed to mean? Mother, please, I love you. I love you, but Chris and I would like to live our own lives. Oh, hi, Carol. Gee, you sound just like your mother. That's a rotten thing to say. <laughs> Thank you, Carol. Mother, all I mean is, I don't want to be thought of as a younger version of you. I have got to be me. I've got to be me. You sound just like Sammy Davis Jr. <laughs> of course, if you're ashamed of me. Oh, Mother, please, don't pull that ashamed of me bit with a size. You see, Chris, you see what I have to put up with? <sighs> Mother, don't sigh. <sighs> Mother... <laughs> Don't sigh. You did it again. Now, look, I know that sigh. It's guaranteed to suck out guilt. Did you hear that, Walter? Chris? You hear how my daughter twists my words around? I sigh twice and she makes me sound like Dracula. <laughs> Wait, what kind of a monster is she making me out to be? What kind of monster? Freeze, Maud. What? Freeze right there. <laughs> now, turn towards the mirror. <laughs> That's what kind of monster. <laughs> now, just because I happen to buy the dog as a birthday present for Chuck, he says Rufus belongs to him. <laughs> oh, Maud. Maud, we've known each other for 20 years, right? 20 beautiful years. And then. you're my best and dearest friend in the world. Best and dearest friend. Then tell me the truth. It's Chuck's dog. <laughs> <laughs> And I only said that, that it Chuck was... was right. I came over here for somebody to tell me I'm right, even if she had to lie about it. All right, Vivian, you're right. You really mean that? No, of course not. I'm right. <laughs> I love you. Uh, oh, sweetheart, please, Vivian. Mark. Not now, Walter. Oh, oh, boy. Why do you care about me and my dog? You've got Walter. Oh, Vivian. <laughs> Me. Nobody cares That's about me. I bet I could disappear tomorrow.
tomorrow nobody'd even notice. Oh, oh what's the use of living in it? Viv, wait a minute, don't say that! Wait, Viv, oh. wait! But please, not now, Walter, I have to go. I've just done it. Terrible but thing. But, I love you, Dave. Vivian, my dearest friend, is threatening to take her own life. Oh, for crying out loud, she's not going to kill herself. Her alimony would stop. <laughs> Walter, don't argue with me. This is I love you, Dave. Yeah? Well, I'm going to spend I love you day at the club. If I hit it lucky, maybe I'll run into somebody affectionate in the steam room. Walter! <laughs> more time watching you sleep than you're willing to spend with me when I'm awake. Oh, so now it's my fault, huh? Now I'm to blame because Viv wants to kill herself. I'm to blame because Viv is desperate and I'm the only friend she has in the whole world. Oh, oh knock it off, Viv! Walter. Walter, come here, Walter. Of course, Maud, I'm here. Yeah. Oh, Walter, I've been waiting for you. I have to talk to you. I'm here, Maud. Talk to me. Talk to me. Walter. Yes, Maud. I want to tell you a joke. <laughs> a joke? This man walks into a restaurant and he orders a lobster. <laughs> When the waiter brings him the lobster, he brings him one that only has one claw. <laughs> Have you heard this, Walter? <laughs> so the man says, what happened to the other claw? And the waiter says, oh, he got in a fight with another lobster and he lost it. <laughs> so the man says, well, take it back and bring me the winner. <laughs> I must say, I found that little cry very cathartic, Doctor, but if it's all right with you, my next catharsis will be Carter's little liver pills. This is hell. <laughs> you laughed. Now I know what it takes, a rotten joke. <laughs> oh, Carol, what the fall -la, la are we doing? <laughs> Oh, Mother, <laughs> uh, I have never seen you happier. Oh, honey, you know me. It's Christmas Eve, and I turn into America's number one sentimental slob. <laughs> I don't know, though, honey. This year seems to be the best of all. You know, I woke up this morning and, for the first time in my life, actually remembered all the words to the 12 days of Christmas, including six geese a-laying, five golden rings, which I've always had this mental block about because it seemed like such a painful thing. <laughs> And then, when we turned on the outdoor lights and I only blew the fuse twice, I said to myself, this is it, this is Christmas. Well, I guess it doesn't hurt having your old friend Stephanie here either, does it? Oh, Carol, honey, that's a miracle. Do you know that I haven't seen Stephanie since graduation day at high school, which was... 33 years ago. All of a sudden, she's good at arithmetic. <laughs> Walter, that was a prejudiced remark. Oh, what are you talking oh, about? Oh, come on, Walter, didn't you hear yourself? The reason you dislike Barry is because subconsciously you resent the fact that he's a homosexual. <laughs> I don't resent anyone being a homosexual. Neither do I. I adore gay people. <laughs> oh. They're so much more fun than bullfighters. <laughs> What I do resent is your accusation. Wait a minute, wait a minute. You mean this Witherspoon is, uh... Yes, but that has nothing to do with anything. Once you get to know him, you'll love him. <laughs> Can we just be friends? <laughs> Walter, I can expect a remark like that from Arthur, but you, I mean, I am shocked to find out that you have a hang-up. What are you talking oh, come about? On, Walter, you're ill, ill. Outside, you're Mr. Nice Guy, inside, Super Jock. <laughs> I resent that. What a terrible thing to say. What's all the fuss about? Just because a man's homosexual? We think quite highly of them in England. Our government's full of them. <laughs> 
the only one where positive isn't a queen is the queen. <laughs> This is not like I just hate remarks like that. I'm beginning to realize I am the only person here who is not prejudiced. Mother, you can't say that about me. I dated a guy that was gay. Really? Why? <laughs> he was a marvelous dancer and he did my hair for half price. <laughs> but you said it anyway. Oh, Carol, don't you understand? You put homosexuals in a different category. But Mother, are you sure you shouldn't check the time? Honey, I have everything under control. In exactly six minutes, 3.59, we're going to watch Walter's commercial, and then I'll drive out to the airport to meet to Grandma's plane, which is flight uh, 256, arriving at 4.45. Something tells me that when she calls... Sweetheart, if there is one thing I never make a mistake on, it is time, Carol. I pride myself on it. Only once did I ever get my times mixed up, which is why you're here. <laughs> Well, have you got the right flight number? Carol, please, honey, I even wrote it down. Look, flight 445 arriving at 256. Oh, my God! <laughs> Don't answer the door! Oh, Mother, I'm sorry. I'm... <laughs> oh. No, Ma! Hardy little girl. <laughs> I'm sorry, mother. I'm oh. sorry I got your flight time mixed up with the arrival time. And no, the time no, 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 not oh. another word. I was glad to save you the trouble. Oh, I didn't mind that long, lonely trip from the airport on that stuffy bus. Walter, that's the woman. That's the woman who, who stole my wallet this afternoon. Your woman got a loose pebble on her beach. <laughs> I won $18 for my dress. Maybe Ari Balafonte like his chest showing, but I don't. <laughs> How dare you come here? Walter, call the police. $18. Walter, the phone. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you must take me for a complete fool. I mean, first you steal my wallet, and then you come here asking for money. I don't know nothing about no wallet. I want $18. If you had asked me for the money this afternoon, I would have given it to you. But no, you had to steal my wallet. Well, I want you to know something. I have always been a friend to the black people. <laughs> but there are a lot of whites who are not the enlightened, caring human beings that I am. And when you stole that wallet, you just reinforced their senseless, stupid prejudices. And that saddens me. You have a great deal to make up for, young lady. Maud. Yes, Walter. That was Bloomingdale. You left your wallet in the lingerie department. <laughs> 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 Big mouth woman on a subway train. Words come out like a lot of crowd. Big mouth woman on a subway train. Well, here goes nothing. It'll be all right, Maud. You'll see. Just a minute, Arthur. Hello, lover boy. <laughs> Was Vivian wearing saran wrap under that room? You know, Maud, this will be the first time I've ever been in her room. Walter, you know, you'll think you're in England. She has everything in there but Big Ben.
course, I haven't been in there since yesterday. <laughs> Look at this, an indoor flea market. <laughs> Maud. Maud, look at this. She was a bee girl on the Titanic. <laughs> did she actually tell you that? No, the shoemaker did. <laughs> Ducks, I'll always love you. Who's the guy with his arm around her? Walter, that's Winston Churchill. I thought he looked familiar. She claims that they had an affair in a bomb shelter during World War II. No kidding. Oh, come on, Walter. She obviously pasted his face on somebody else's body. Which accounts for him being in the uniform of the Canadian Mounted Police. Walter, look in the closet. Why should I? Look in the closet. <laughs> There's a naked man in there. Maybe it's Big Ben himself. Mrs. Finley, I have this sinking feeling. You're really serious. Oh, yes. oh. You ain't we all know I am very serious, sir. Well, so am I. Look, I was coming east anyway in a couple of days. I'll have my agent send your check back. I, uh... I appreciate the compliment, if that's what it is. Uh, look, Mr. Fonda, please, two minutes. Give me two minutes of your time. Please, please, two minutes! Two minutes, that's all I ask. Please, Mr. Fonda, sit down. Two minutes. Look. Mr. Fonda, look around you. This is your headquarters. You are a presidential candidate. Mrs. Findlay, as we used to say back home, a cat may have kittens in the oven, but that don't make them biscuits. <laughs> oh, that's marvelous. And they said Eisenhower was witty. <laughs> Mr. Fonda. Mr. Fonda, I saw you play Clarence Darrow. And I was overwhelmed by the way your, your earthiness and your honesty and your integrity came shining through. I also played Jesse James' brother. <laughs> and you played him beautifully. Oh, yes, I, I just loved you in that. And, and I also thought Ty Power was awfully cute as Jesse. <laughs> Come off it, Gallagher. What would you be doing on the telephone with the President of the United States? I called him to remind him that you arrived today and that it might be nice if he called you. I thought it might make you feel important. Oh. Well, you succeeded. I do feel important. I feel important enough to pick my own legislative assistant. I'm sorry. I told the president I would be staying on. It made him feel better. You told the president that you would be staying on my staff? Yes. You're fired. Now, is everybody from staff here? Good. All right, I think y'all gonna like the new member. She's a little wet behind the ears, but nothing's really changed. You still take your orders from me. Oh, Congresswoman Finnish, anything you'd like to say? You're fat! <laughs> God's sake, Walter. I mean, how can you refuse to get married when there are millions of old people behind the Iron Curtain going single? <laughs> I'm an independent woman. I wouldn't take the name Beasley if it was Rockefeller. <laughs> Mrs. Nogatuck, you should have some respect for Bert. 
Beasley men are the head of the house. Beasley men wear the pants. Beasley Bert, men... in all due respect, I am really getting very bored with you Beasley men. <laughs> Here's the rice. Philip will be right down. The car's at the front, and listen, we can drive fast because I'm a doctor. <laughs> Everybody take a coat. Oh, boy. But, I can't uh, believe uh, Everybody, wait a minute. Listen, listen to me. Wait a minute. Uh, listen, wait a minute. Wait a minute! <laughs> what? What, 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 what? Before we go to the church to celebrate this very special day, there is one little problem that has to be ironed out. What is it? Hell will freeze over before I oh, take I this boxy line you, for you my oh, wife. You Mrs. Mrs. Nogatuck, Bert, I'm shocked. Here Maud's trying to explain a problem and you two are just jabbering away. <laughs> All right, go ahead. What's the problem? Oh, where have we gone wrong? Where have we lost our way? I didn't lose the way. I was going from the den to the kitchen. <laughs> Look at us, Walter. Look at us. All the joy, the spontaneity, and the excitement is out of our marriage. Walter, we don't even own a bearskin rug. You won't let me keep a gun in the house. Walter, don't you see? Our marriage has become warm, safe, secure, right. and boring, Walter. Boring, boring, boring. We have not one single tingle left in our marriage. Please. Oh, Lord. Walter, honey. Remember when we first started going together? You used to put on that corny straw hat and play that hokey ukulele and sing, Yes, sir, that's my baby no Lord, sir. you always hated it when I did that. I know. How come you don't do it anymore? <laughs> oh, no, you come home now. I say I love you, you grunt. Take off your shoes and check the TV guide. I mean, Walter, we don't even talk to each other anymore. Okay, Walter, let's talk. How'd it go today? I just got up, Walter. <laughs> <laughs> Walter. Now, Walter. Uh -huh. Okay, I'll go first. <laughs> but listen, I don't want you pounding on the door telling me that I take forever in the bathroom. <laughs> which is exactly half as long as you take. Okay, Walter, last chance. You really must have tied one on last night. Boy, when I came up to bed at 10.30, you guys were feeling no pain even then. And I knew the party was getting out of hand when you started playing frisbee with the frozen pizza. <laughs> What time did you finally get up to bed, Walter? Walter? Walter! Hi, Maud. Uh, Francie, dear, there's something you don't know about me. I am famous for not losing my temper. <laughs> oh, well, if you want me to perform, don't I get a little reward? How about a banana? Sure, 
for the little gorilla. Because <laughs> that's what we is, you know. Gorillas. Oh, fancy, dear. I might as well tell you I am not going to Why, lose my temper. Why, sure. <laughs> you give the little gorilla a little reward and she'll do all kinds of cute little tricks for you. Uh, I tell you, I am not going to lose my temper. Why, she even delivered the mail. <laughs> Here we are, everybody. Special delivery from the planet of the Apes. I am not. I am not going to lose my temper. <laughs> no, how about a dance? Yeah. We all got rhythm, you know. I got rhythm. I got rhythm. Hold it. Hold it right there. You hold it. <laughs> I just lost my temper. <laughs> Congratulations, Francie. You have just done away with 200 years of guilt in two minutes flat. <laughs> Come and sit down, you little nerd. <laughs> now, you listen to me. I know life hasn't been very good to you, Francie, but there are people who are reaching out, and I'm one of them. All right, I made a lot of mistakes, and I, I tried too hard. I hate to disillusion you, but I'm not perfect. You sit there, and I'm long-winded, too. <laughs> I made a lot of mistakes and I said the wrong thing. But Francie, I cared for you. Everybody cared for you. But if you're so full of hate that you just can't accept that possibility, then maybe you're right. So get upstairs and get your things and get out of here. And so far as I'm concerned, you can, you can freeze your butt off till it turns blue. <laughs> okay, Walter. Talk to me. There's an old spinning wheel. Walter, cut that out! Now look, I feel just as bad about Floyd as you do. But darling, what happened to Floyd is as much a part of life as living. You have to expect these things as you grow older. Walter, I've had it. I can't take it anymore. You're not the only man on earth who's growing older. Oh yeah, and how about this chicken neck? <laughs> Walter, please stop torturing yourself. Listen, darling. I have seen pictures of you when you were 20 and 30 years old. Walter, you are better looking now than you were then. Now, what do you think about that? Maud, middle-aged people always look better to other middle-aged people. <laughs> That's all that keeps us from killing ourselves. Walter, what are you talking about, darling? You are better looking now than you were. I swear it. And so am I, Walter. <laughs> I said, and so am I, Walter. <laughs> God will get you for this. Walter, you're badly mistaken. Well, it is as far as I'm concerned. Good evening. Hi, Hi there. We're the Housers, and uh, these are the Cronins. Oh, good. And we're here to pick up our husband and wife of the year. <laughs> They'll be down in just one minute. Won't you come in? Oh. I'll tell you another thing. When I'm gone, I don't want any greasy head tickle or moving into my bed either. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Finley are still getting dressed. <laughs> if I want a greasy head tickle in my bed, that's my business! <laughs> and Mrs. Finley is rehearsing her acceptance speech. <laughs> To me, Maud. You stop following me, Walter. Look, I'm sick and tired of your attitude. I mean, you're preempting the male role. Okay, you want to wear the pants of the family? Okay. Walter, if you are stupid enough to stand around in your undershorts, let me tell you one thing. What? Our company's here. <laughs> hey, you're not going to that dedication. Just that. I wouldn't go to that church tonight if Charlton Heston himself were cutting the ribbon. <laughs> You've got to go. Carol, Philip, everybody we know will be there. It'll look bad if you don't come to that dedication. Tough. Tabernacles. <laughs> Marty, that's sacrilege. Well, I agree with Maud. I think what Walter's doing is wrong. Oh, knock it off, Viv. 
Knock it off, I'm on your side. Oh, I'm sorry, honey, force of habit. <laughs> there is nothing wrong with what I've done. Well, if there's nothing wrong, then why'd you keep it a secret? Look, I'm not on trial here. I just forgot to mention it, that's all. It, it slipped my mind. Slipped your mind? That's hard to believe, Walter. Coming from the man who remembers Sally Rand's chest measurements from the 1933 World's Fair. Well, Walter always did have a good head for figures. <laughs> Will you knock it off, Arthur? Maud, it's me, Walter, your husband. I mean, do you really think that I joined the church to sell a lousy $5,000 worth of appliances? Yes. You actually think that's important to me? A measly $5,000 is not important to me. I wouldn't sell my soul for that. Of course he wouldn't, Marty. The community church is going to set up social halls all over Westchester County. One who could sell maybe $100,000 worth of money. I don't want to tell you because if I tell you, then you'll know that it was your dearest friend who told you, and I'm afraid to tell you anyway because you'll hit me. <laughs> There is always that risk, Vivian. <laughs> Sit down, Maud. What is it, dear? Well, I just found out something very interesting about myself. I'm not bland. <laughs> what are you saying, Vivian? Maud, the one Perry is, is turned on by is me. <laughs> <laughs> Why are we laughing? Well, it's ridiculous. Hey, but he kissed me, Maud, twice. On the mouth. That's shocking. I know. <laughs> no, I mean a woman your age still having sexual fantasies. It's not a fantasy. Well, of course it is. I guess I know a sexual fantasy when I see one. There's usually a jockey in it. <laughs> Vivian, what are you trying to tell me? That Perry came right out and said, Vivian, I want to have an affair with you? No, he, he was much more direct. It was just one word. I can see the handwriting on the wall. Then Vivian. you know the word. <laughs> Vivian, poor, sweet Vivian, you really believe this, don't you? It, it's true. Oh. He even bit me on the ear. Oh, come on, Vivian, you bit yourself on the ear. Well, how, how could I? <laughs> Mrs. Noggins, like, I just can't keep it in any longer. We really have such a wonderful surprise for oh, you. Oh, yes, and you are going to love it. But now, listen, dear, I don't want you to get too excited now. Now, are you sure you're feeling all right? Oh, yes, Mama. I'm pretty chipper. Good. It's, well, uh, let me just tell you. Just my neck's got a little crick sitting up like this. And, good. And I do in hope I don't get bed sores from this mattress here. Fine. And in this two new feeling I've had. Who cares? <laughs> what I mean is, we really have a wonderful surprise for you. Probably the greatest surprise of your life. You know, Walter has a few connections, he made a few phone calls. And you are not going to have to wait to take your final citizenship test. You're going to take it today? Right now, oh. in this very room. As a special favor, guess who's out in the hall? Judge Fletcher. A United oh. States judge here? Oh, it's impossible. Oh, no, it is not impossible. They do this in, you know, certain rare cases. And I'm a certain rare case? <laughs> oh. You're granting me my dying wish? Oh, no, 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 oh, no. of course not. Mrs. Oh, Norbert. yes, you're telling me I'm going to croak. <laughs> I'm going to that great maid's room upstairs. Or downstairs. <laughs> Where do you think you're going? I'm not going to spend my last moments in no flipping bed hospital here. No. I'm, I'm too young to die. No, you're not. I mean... <laughs> I mean, you are not going to die. Now take off your coat and hop back into bed. I am going to die. You're being nice to me. I am not being nice to She's you. She's never been nice to you. I don't have any other choice. Walter, how can you love me and... 
talk divorce. That's because I love you. The divorce is for you. I'd rather have a mix master. <laughs> what, if we lived the way you wanted, I might end up hating you. And that would make you hate me, and I don't want you to hate me. That's how much I love you. Look, Walter, hate me, and we'll keep the marriage together like everybody else. <laughs> Oh, come on, Walter, this is ridiculous. This is, this is stupid. I mean, it's so unnecessary. Boy, there's no other way. All right, Walter. Okay. Okay, okay. But I'm telling you right now, Walter, I am not going to cry and break down in hysterics. I will never go through another divorce like that again. I will not let you do to me what Chester did to me, or Albert did to me, or Barney. Barney died. I know, he was the only husband who knew how to end a relationship. <laughs> let go! Just be yourself. I mean, I was the company choice to be office manager, and if I can accomplish all that... As a woman, then why should I be ashamed of acting like a woman? You shouldn't be ashamed. Never, never, never be ashamed. Oh, Walter. Walter, if I only had the courage to go back. Maud, you must go back. And you will go back. Right after lunch. <laughs> Walter, it's special moments like this when I, when I realize how much I need you. And vice versa, Maud. Vice versa. <coughs> oh, Walter. Walter, you're giving me the lift I need. I'm doing the best I can. <laughs> Walter, thanks to you, I think, I think I can do it. I know I can do it. I will do it. And Walter, I promise I'll never, ever let sex stand in the way again. How are you talking? <laughs> Those men were wrong, Walter. Society is wrong, and it's up to real women to change that. Maud, where are you going? Back where I belong, Walter. Back to that office. But Maud, I thought... You and I. Walter, it's 10 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> oh, have you no sense of morality? I mean, have you no respect for the, for the sacred institution of marriage? I've got a lot of respect for it, and that's why I didn't get married. Which is more than you can say. Four husbands. You're the one who ought to be arrested for loitering in church. <laughs> well, at least I always had a sense of fair play. I mean, I never went around hurting innocent, decent human beings, just my husband's. <laughs> what, who are you to preach to me? Now listen to me, Lola, I forbid this. I absolutely forbid it. Oh, my God, it's Mrs. Norgut. Now, quick, hide under the bed. What am I saying? <laughs> oh, Mom, it's good to be back. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's you, Lola. What brings you to town? An American Legion convention? <laughs> well, Mrs. Norgut, talk about a lovely outfit. You looked exactly like a tomato surprise. <laughs> Mrs. Nogatuck, we weren't expecting you until Wednesday. Oh, I know, but I felt so guilty about leaving Bert alone. Uh, yes, uh, I haven't seen you for quite a while. Since last we met, I got myself a husband. Yeah, we've covered that. <laughs> uh, look, Mrs. Nogatuck, why don't you go and, and freshen up a bit? Oh, but Bert's not upstairs. I thought he might be down here with you. No, he is. He isn't. He well, isn't. Where on earth can he be? Mrs. Nogatuck, sit down. I think we should get all of this out into the open. Uh, Maud, wait just a minute. Now that Mrs. Nogatuck is back, uh, the weather at Cape Cod is terrible this time of year. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, 
But we still have that package and Yonkers to explain. Yonkers? Cape Cod? What are you two talking about? <laughs> Mrs. Nogatuck, last night, Bert felt badly about going to the Knights of St. Mel Ball without a date. So... Bert had we... a date. He took another woman out. Who was she? Me. Oh, what a relief. <laughs> What is that supposed to mean? Well, let's face it, Lola. You're hardly competition. <laughs> Why, you little round person. Oh, now, wait a minute. Now, now, just stop it. Stop it, both of you. Oh, Walter, you're just talking nonsense. If Maud was going to leave you for Jeremy, she wouldn't be out having lunch with him. Then she'd come right through that door and tell you to your face. Hello, Walter. There, you see. <laughs> Walter, this is Jeremy Hubbard. Vivian, we better be going. Oh, uh, Jeremy, this is uh, Dr. Arthur Harmon. Oh, how do you do? How do you do? Uh, this is his wife, Vivian. Hi. Hello. <laughs> Vivian! <laughs> Walter. Maud, you've got some nerve walking in here with this guy. Walter. I don't like it. I don't like it one bit. Walter, will you be quiet? Now, Jeremy and I have something to tell you. If you'd have the decency to listen, you'd realize how completely innocent it is. Okay, Maud, I'm sorry. What do you have to tell me? Walter, guess what? Jeremy and I are sexually attracted to each other. <laughs> what, did they hurt you? No. Maud, did they, you know? Did they abuse you? No. You sure? I was here, Vivian. <laughs> what is it, Marty? What did they do? They came into my house. My house, my house. They came into my house. Oh, Arthur, get her a chair. Oh. <laughs> uh. Oh, it was terrible. I mean, these two men came in and gagged me and, and tied me up and then took everything from our house, our home, our sanctuary. Oh, Maud, my poor Maud. If it had been a fire or a flood or a tornado, I wouldn't have felt so terrible. I wouldn't have had this awful feeling of violation. I knew it. <laughs> Marty, let me get you a sedative. No, I'm all right. Just get me a chair. <laughs> Oh, it was such a shock. Listen, Walter, don't you think we should uh, get in touch with our insurance agent? Chick Sears. I know him. I'll call him. Thanks, Arthur. Oh, this makes me furious. I mean, a couple of punks come into my house and tie up my wife. Maud, how do you suppose they got in? I don't know, Vivian. I was sitting in a chair, and the next thing I knew, I was being tied up and gagged. You didn't hear him come in? No, you see, I had just sat down and turned on television to watch the captain and to kneel, and I couldn't have been asleep more than two minutes when it happened. Hello, I'm Mary Patterson, and this is Jesus Escobar. Oh, come in, come in. Hi, Mary. Hi, Jesus. I'm Hi. Philip's grandmother. Patterson, Patterson, Patterson. That name sounds familiar. Well, Mary's father is Dr. Patterson, the dentist. Of course. Happy birthday, Philip. Aw. Oh, thanks, Mary. But you didn't have to bring me a present, though. It was my pleasure. Oh. Now, listen, kids, I don't want you to be shy. Just help yourselves to... <laughs> Mary, would you like some punch? No, thank you. Sweet drinks are very bad for the teeth. Gee, thanks a lot, Mary. Look, Grandma, a gum stimulator and a spool of dental floss. <laughs> you have such nice teeth. You should take good care of them. Hey! How's the party coming? It, uh, it shows promise. <laughs> well, let's not kid ourselves, Grandma. Nobody else is coming. Oh, Philip. Well, they're all at Jerry Carlisle's house. The word's out that this is going to be a dull party. That boy seems to be having a wonderful time. <laughs> hey, Seuss, he's from Venezuela. He doesn't even speak English yet. He probably thinks he's at the other party. 
Hey, Seuss? That's an interesting name. How does he spell it? J-E-S-U-S. Good Lord, that's Jesus. <laughs> Don't those people have any respect for our religion? Arthur, we use names from the Bible. Uh, Hubie's nephew there is Joseph. And my name's Mary. That's right. Named after the Blessed Virgin. No. I was named after my aunt. <laughs> you know, Ellie, Steve walked out on you, and now you're chasing after him. Girls don't do that today. Honey, it's 1976. You don't need anybody. You can take care of yourself. You're a grown woman. What do you mean I'm a grown woman? I'm only 19. Only 19? Jane Austen wrote Pride and Prejudice when she was only 19. I know. Queen Victoria ruled the British Empire when she was only 19. Yeah, but... Joan of Arc led troops into battle when she was only 19. So please, Ellie, don't tell me, oh, I'm only 19. But I love Steve. What do you know about love? You're only 19. <laughs> much. I want to marry him. Oh, Ellie. Ellie, marriage isn't the answer to anything. Believe me, Ellie. She knows. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm from Iola, Kansas, and in Iola, Kansas, we still believe in marriage. Ellie. Ellie, you're a sweet kid. Why don't you spare yourself a heartbreak? Look, Steve walked out on you. He's running all the way across the country to get away from you. Now, give me one logical reason why he'd want to marry you. I'm pregnant. <laughs> Steve, your fiance's here. <laughs> You're pregnant. <laughs> yeah, isn't that terrific? Ellie! Hey, Steve! Steve. You're giving me back my Kawasaki, that's great. Yeah. Uh, Thanks. Says Steve now? Mm -hmm. Know what? Well... Ellie, I think you better tell him. Yeah. <laughs> hey! <laughs> Steve, I'm, you know, like, where you're at, it might sketch you out, but hey, yeah. you, me, the rosé wine, yeah. you know? Oh, yeah, sure, it was super really, but, but now, you yeah, know? Yeah, I know, but we shouldn't have, and you know, we knew, and it's yeah. like, hey, we bummed out. You're pregnant. <laughs> Steve, you knew? Well, she just told me. When? 